Hello everyone. I am back in the kitchen for International Cocktail Day. My favorite day of the year. So um, when I found out it was International Cocktail Day, I was like, oh, stop everything. I'm going to change what I was going to do. I was going to do a whole recipe for a sorghum risotto, which I will show next week, I think. Um, but I changed the cocktails, but I'm going to stick with sorghum. So this is sorghum. This is in our Bean and Grain Club this month. Um, this is a very wonderful grain. If you have never heard of sorghum and you're now Googling it, let me save the trouble. Um, so sorghum comes to us like so many wonderful ingredients from um, West Africa. And, um, you know, came to America from enslaved people through with through enslaved people from West Africa to the South. Um, sorghum is a really amazing grain. It looks, um, looks almost like corn, but at the top of it, there is this big fluffy thing that has all these little sorghum grains on it. And it is um, incredibly drought tolerant. It's very nutritious. Um, it's really great for the earth. Um, and they grow a lot in drought in countries there are, there's a lot of drought. You're going to find recipes for uh, using sorghum. A lot of uh, Indian recipes use sorghum. Um, West African recipes use sorghum. Um, and it's really catch on here in the United States. But sorghum, the grain, also gets this other thing called sorghum syrup. And if you get our email newsletter you might have gotten an email about our sorghum syrup this week and all the amazing things you can use it for one of the things consequently you can use it for is you guessed it cocktails so sorghum syrup comes also from sorghum um, it is like uh, so molasses is from the cane juice of sugar cane sorghum syrup comes from the cane juice of sorghum sorghum cane it's actually a different kind of sorghum than this. It's a, a variety of sorghum called sweet sorghum. And that started in the United States in the 1850s, was brought to here, and became the, the main sweetener in the South and throughout the United States. We were exporting a lot of it because at the time, sugar cane had to be grown in subtropical and tropical environments and the shipping costs were very high so the cost of sugar was incredibly high and therefore and sorghum because it's drought tolerant does not require a tropical in, uh, environment to grow and was growing incredibly well through the american south um it was a cheaper commodity so we were growing it growing a lot of it and exporting it then sugar got cheaper and sorghum kind of went by the wayside. And now it's only produced by a handful of artisanal producers. Um, this guy comes to us from Bourbon Barrel Foods and um, they, um, they get their sorghum from a small farmer who grows it there in Kentucky. And they make all of their stuff in Kentucky, small batch, handmade, really careful um, with the ingredients. And, so the thing about sorghum syrup is it really varies from producer to producer because how long they cook it and how hot they cook it and the way that they cook it changes the color and the flavor. So this is a very, very dark sorghum, much similar to molasses. Sometimes you'll find some of some more amber color. Um, we like the darker because it's a little more um, flavorful. So it has a flavor. I'm going to show you here in a minute has the flavor like molasses. Um, so it's one of the few sweeteners that is truly vegan. So I don't know if you can see that. That, this is sorghum syrup, just like molasses, really dark. And just opening the jar, I can smell it. It's just got this rich, earthy, delicious flavor, full of minerals. It's incredibly healthy for you. Um, because it is packed with minerals, as you would suspect. Um, I can't help myself. Oh my God, it is so good. Um, I could literally just eat it right out of the jar. It is so good. It's just got so much flavor. So molasses, to me, has a little bit of a, a bite to it, has a little bit of a, 
I don't know how to describe it, but it, it, it's just got a little bit of a almost metallic taste to it and a little bite to it that I don't find with sorghum, at least this, this particular variety of sorghum that we have. Mm, God, so delicious. It's just, mm, you can imagine this in baked goods when you taste it. It's got this uh, delicious richness to it. Mm, it would make the best sugar cookie ever. Um, it's like a sugar spice cookie would be amazing. Now, in cocktails, what you want to do is you make a simple syrup out of it, just like you would normal simple syrup. It's a 50% sorghum syrup, 50% hot water. Because if you put this, it's so thick that if you put it right into a cocktail, you'd be stirring it forever. So you make this little, you kind of water it down a little bit, make this sorghum syrup. If you have a fancy jar like I do, you get to put it in there. And, um, and then so I'm going to make for you it pairs incredibly well with everything. And you can use it in replace of simple syrup in any of your cocktail recipes. So you can make a margarita with it. You can make anything. But what it's going to do is it's going to make it, um, be aware, it's going to make it a little dark brown. And it's also going to give you this kind of really interesting, complex flavor. It pairs incredibly well, as you would guess, with bourbon. So our Kentucky bourbon and our Kentucky sorghum are going to go together. And we're going to make... A little southern old-fashioned here. So I'm going to take some uh, bourbon here and do two ounces of bourbon. And then I'm going to go equal with my sorghum syrup, which I know sounds insane, but trust me, it works. Equal my sor sorghum syrup. Then I'm going to take, and I'm just going to squeeze, I've got a car car orange here, and I'm just going to squeeze some car car orange juice into this, about the juice of half an orange in here. Yum. Ooh, good. Okay. Put that in my compost bin, and uh, I'm going to shake it. Okay. Look at that. Yum. It almost looks like a Coca-Cola. It's so dark. And then you throw a little orange in there. Yum. Mm. Ooh, yum. Okay, now, if you want to, like, really take it up a notch, you want to impress the heck out of your friends, I'm going to show you how to do little burnt orange on it. I'm going to take your knife here. Now, granted, you could use a paring knife, which might be, you know, better because it's not so huge. Doesn't matter. You're going to cut a little circle in your orange here. Just get your, your orange peel here. A little circle. I'm going to light a match here. Yeah. Okay. Here's my match. Now watch this. I've got Match over drink, orange peel a little far away, but maybe three, four inches, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to want it, and I'm just going to go, oh, oh, didn't work. Come on. You're supposed to work. <laughs> Watch. Oh, no, it's not working. <laughs> okay, that never <laughs> It works so well usually. Okay, let me try it again. I think I got too much of the juicy part of the orange here. Let me see if I can do it again. Oh. Poodle, I don't have another match. <laughs> Wait, here we go. Okay, here we go. The perils of being live. Okay, ready, set. Ooh, did you see it? <laughs> it just kind of burns, and it gets a little bit of the smell and the flavor onto your drink. Okay, it didn't work as impressively as it usually does, but uh, it works. This is a delicious cocktail. Yum. Cheers, everybody. Happy International mm. Happy International Cocktail Day. Yum yums. So now, of course, I'm going to throw one of my Orcello cherries on here. And um, we've talked about these before. These are the most incredible. It's the only cocktail cherry I would ever tell you to use. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's going to be beautiful on there. So these guys, I'm down to my last one. I better buy it and get another jar. These guys, 
So, or Silla cherries. Cheers, look at that. Ooh, yum. Yeah, beautiful little cherry. It's perfect little trimmed stem. And unlike most cherries, it's not dripping in syrup. So these guys, they make them the old fashioned way from um, the original recipe from Italy, um, which got bastardized in America. And they made those neon red, horrible, syrupy, sweet, nasty things that your kids like to eat in a Shirley Temple. But probably you don't. Um, I hope so. These things are made with real Mercino liqueur from Italy and the organ cherries, beautiful, beautiful organic cane sugar, cherries, Mercino liqueur, a little lemon juice, almond extract. Oh, I didn't even know they put almond extract in it. It is so delicious. This is the original recipe. This is the way they were intended to be. And once you've had them, you'll never go back. I promise you. Delicious, delicious, delicious. Mmm. All right, everybody. So you can get the sorghum syrup in the store, and it's great for everything. I'm also going to be um, glazing duck breast with it, which sounds amazing. And using it, I've been using it to sweeten everything. So just use it in, in place of honey. I, oh, salad dressing. There's a great recipe on our blog um, today for salad dressing that I made with this. It's so good because it just brings this amazing flavor to the party um, that you don't get from anything else. And if you're vegan, it's a way to sweeten, you know, sweeten things without honey. Um, it's just a lovely, lovely thing. So um, everybody enjoy. And uh, I'll see you next week. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.